All right, hey guys. Hello, hello. Welcome back to another Sunday Tea Book. Mm -hmm. Hey Josh, we saw you say hey a while ago, and now we're here. We can say hi back. Yes, hello. All right, so um, right, raining in Ottawa today. Mm, it's a gloomy, really gloomy, rainy day. The cold weather is coming, but uh, nothing can get us down because it's <laughs> Sunday Tea Book. It's a pretty cool section we've been working our mm -hmm. way through. And a hard session, I would say. Mm. It's quite hard for me, at least. To translate and get the, yeah. how should I say, the, the, the proper turns. And yeah, stuff. there's going to be so. some cool questions I'm going to throw out to you guys today. Mm. But before we do that, let's chat a little bit about what is Sunday Tea Book. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I sit down together. We, do, we go through books, articles, or papers that are hard to access and usually uh, not even translated, but have great tea information in them. And um, what we do is we sit down and we go through them live with you, uh, passage by passage, and we translate them together. So that might sound like, well, why don't you just translate them and publish them on the web? Well, because in the process of going through this together, there has been, in my experience over the last five years, I have gained tons of insight from going, doing exactly this kind of thing with Jen. And I was just like, this is going to be so useful mm -hmm. to share with people. Um, and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to share that information with you, chip in with your, and also in translating, I'm not a, I'm not like an English major. I'm not a translation expert. Um, I'm a native English speaker. That's we why. Actually, I'm, sometimes uh, suffering from coming up with the, coming up with the right words. Uh, a that's lot, right. Actually. That's right. And in yeah. many cases, you guys have helped us a lot with that. So that's another benefit of doing it here together live. Mm -hmm. So ask us anything. We're going to, today we're going to lean on you guys a bit. You'll see what's coming up there. <laughs> Because we've got some interesting, I had some interesting questions when I finished the section, like high level that we need you guys for. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So we're going to continue on book, China book by uh, Jian Li, my mom. And um, it's a great book, and especially in today's session, you will see how great this book is for people who really just get into uh, Chinese teas. And this one covers all the basics, like this too, when I go to tea festivals so many people ask me what are those what are those for and this mm -hmm. is what we're going to talk about uh, yep. in today's session <laughs> yes and um so if you're like me and you love gadgets and stuff like that this is a great section all those tools are just so fun mm -hmm. well we're about to sip some uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> white tea uh yo 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 it's okay, it's still there. HYT, let me just pick that up. Here, I'll just me... chip that off. The, uh, I'll shoot over thing. to the T camera here. Okay, we'll see how that works. Okay, sorry Instagram guys, you cannot see that very nicely. All right, aim for nicely. the lens. Here, here, no, up, up. So there oh, it oh, is. Maya. <laughs> there is That's the really uh, close. Age Show May. Mm. So the YouTube guys are getting a close up of this and this is a good time to maybe mention to the Instagram guys. Mm. Um, when we do the read through, um, the, the Chi China Tea, Jen Li's book that we're doing, that we're working our way through in these episodes is already translated, but in a lot of cases, it's quite confusing. So we're gonna actually bring it up on the screen. So the Instagram folks, if you wanna follow along today, jump on over to our YouTube channel where we'll be going through page by page. We cannot do that on Instagram, so we're gonna drop out of Instagram in a few moments. And what I'm gonna do is I'll bring up the page, I'll read the section through exactly as it appears, and then I'll, I'll come up with what I got out of the English. Mm -hmm. uh, as a person who cannot read Chinese, this will be my sincere English interpretation of the translation. And then Jen is going to pipe in with anything that was that I misconstrued or that was completely left out perhaps of the translation. And of course, as always, in the description in the YouTube video down below, we'll have a link to the finished translation on our blog so you can uh, reference it. And this book is fantastic for that. Uh, beginner or expert, it has got great um, selection information as well as usage information that's sometimes nice to go back to. So mm -hmm. if you're uh, new to the channel or you just discovered our channel, please uh, click that subscribe button. It would really help us out. And of course, the best thing you could do to help us out is to help yourself out to some awesome tea. We'll also have the link to the uh, to this Age Show May down below. And of course, from there, you can find um, tons of other amazing Chinese teas. So with that, I'm going to say bye bye to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I'll see you guys on YouTube. See you guys side. on the YouTube side, and YouTube. We will get down to business in a moment. And and I didn't name it. Uh, Josh is there. Hey, Holiday is there, and uh, Igor is there. Hello, guys. 
Hey, Igor, hey, buddy. Title. Um, quickly give this a little name here. What are you guys drinking? Sipping any white teas or Perfect. something else? We have been, I think we're officially in the autumn season as the temperature has been really cool. So aged yeah. white tea, definitely lovely in the fall. Yeah, definitely. I have got my fingers crossed, probably in vain that we might have an, an Indian summer, but um, doesn't look like that. doesn't look like it I at check all. weather report like crazy. So yeah, in the next she... two weeks, nope. <laughs> so we have like a sort of like a religious difference in the family. I don't believe in weather reports more like I don't believe them, but you're pretty good at checking them. So it also, I take advantage of that. So it's a little bit hypocritical of me. So, oh, hello, Cindy. How's it going? Oh yeah, Cindy bounced over from uh, Instagram. I saw you there. Right, she's in uh, California. Are you in the zone where the fire, the forest fire, do you get affected? Like, I guess I most of the so. region is affected mm, by the yeah, air quality. Yeah, red skies and everything, right? Hope you're far from the danger hope zone. You're, hope you're well and safe. And Fernando is having a Tuo Shu from uh, Mayleaf. Awesome. Oh, Welcome, cool. Fernando. And, or Fernanda. Th and thanks for sharing, Fernanda. Fernanda. Right. And thanks for sharing us. Thanks for sharing what you're drinking with us. Very cool. Mm. Hecha Holiday, a 2010 Hai Lang Hao. As you like, as you like ripe, has blended ah. with an old, blended with as old as 2003. Nice. Mm, really yeah. nice. And Jan, ahoy from uh, Czech Republic. Welcome. Been a while. I met you. Commented. Mm. We saw your comment about trying to catch up, and I'm really glad you made it. Thanks for dropping by. Yes. You, oh, we've inspired Cindy to drink an aged white. Cool. Mm. Great choice. And Josh says, I just tried some cold brew Singren Xiang Dance Hong. Considering a hot brew, though, I wonder what to make. Mm. Mm. I feel right. like you had a Feng Huang Dance Hong last week too. Mm. Say, are you a big like dance home lover? <laughs> yeah, or it could be he's on a tear. I sometimes get like ah. in a groove and like I'm on a Tae Guan Yin groove for a while. So I yeah, might bounce I around too. autumn and classic and you know, normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I might switch over to a Shu Puar groove or just a Puar groove. So maybe you're just grooving. Let us know. And Cindy's about 25 miles from the active fires. I imagine everybody around the globe has heard about these in intense wildfires in mm. California. I think all of Port, like it goes all the way up to Oregon and uh, even touching Washington. It's a huge, like it's like whole states are on fire. It's crazy. So I hope you guys are all safe yeah. and stay well and have nice clean air to breathe. Really <laughs> very fundamental. Well, that kind of helped with the weary mess. Oh, God, our neighborhood burned down nine years ago. Don't want to go through that again. Yes, oh, I not. really don't want you to go through that again too. So mm. All our thoughts are with you and hoping that that doesn't happen for sure. Mm. And uh, Igor is finishing his Yang Sheng Puar session. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to pull up the book, guys, and we're going to jump in. We got a big, uh, not a big, a really good, exciting section. Interesting. Very yeah, interesting. Yeah, really interesting. Session. So let me get the book up here. Um, as Jen said, we've got China Tea. I got to bring up my copy and away we go. And don't worry, as always, we'll come back for comments. I try not to scroll super fast. I don't want to make people dizzy. Dizzy, right, right. right. They might have full screen and stuff. Guys, let me know how I do. So here's the section. We're still in this section right here. Essential tea sets for starters, beginners. And this time we're going to be starting off with exquisite tea sets. Add more fun. All right. I'm going to read the, probably the whole page here and then we'll come back. Right. All right. Exquisite tea sets add more fun. Drinking tea for a good mood and tea sets can refresh us too. The standard to select tea sets is that no matter when you want to drink and you see the tea sets, you can add more interest. Besides, nurturing tea sets can bring you happiness. I'm going to keep on rolling and we'll do the fragrance smelling cup in the same pass. Functions. It is used need to show the full picture. Like, get rid of us? I think it's okay. You guys okay. want to see us, right? <laughs> and we're not blocking. I usually do that if we're blocking the oh, text. Okay, okay, okay. Mm. So, um, it is, so functions. It is used to smell the fragrance that remained at the bottom. It is matched with cups and have the same quality with them. Together with tray, it can make a set of drinking cups. 
types. The material is based on porcelain. Also, there are sand fired, which glazed inside and pottery cups. I think I'll break there and just do this page. Or is there one more? No, I did types. So yeah, we'll do this page. I'm yeah, just... yeah, I think so. Cool. So just coming back to the top, maybe the top, I'll just make sure I put it under. I think that's mm. what you're getting at. So there we go. Can we quickly just uh, switch to the tea? Tea table? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Superior tech support. Just want to show you guys this. You would think this is different teas or stuff like that. There's right. Uh, the shape of the teacup really affects the color too. Oh wow! Mm. I noticed that almost every time we put uh, we put the same tea uh, liquor in those two cups, the color right, is right. widely because different. Because mine's so deep, right? Yeah. It, um, it's yeah. You got to look through more liquor. So here we go. We'll have a That's little it. sip. Then no, we can a, go back to. It's the... a good observation in general. I actually had never thought of that because we almost always use matched cups. Mm -hmm. And. Um, but when we don't have mashed cups, the liquor, it really is like much more um, dark. Mm. Cheers, guys. Oh, go back to the uh, book with us. Alrighty, so this was, um, the beginning is just an intro. So it's not, it hasn't got like super rich, full of the important information, but it is the intro to the section. I did find it pretty muddled, but I think understandable, mm. right? Um, tea sets are... Um, tea set, basically they're saying that the tea set, the, the setup you're using is also part of the experience. It gives you some, you know, tea is refreshing, but so is the experience of using a nice tea set, right? Yes. Actually, because it's the, the translated as a tea set, while it's more like a tea accessory, all the stuff, mm. this mm. paragraph set the tone as the previous, what we just talked uh, talk about in previous weeks, those are more like essential-ish. Right. Uh, tea wares and tea accessories are, and then from this part on, those are more like, if you like it, right. you can have it. Sort of so optional. For fun. Yes. Yeah. But not a key, like a You're core right. accessory. Previously, the word tea sets in the book was used to mean tea wear, but now it's actually right. meaning tea accessories or like... Yeah. For tea fun. You know, yeah. like enhancements. Mm. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, I like the last sentence too. What I got from the last sentence, besides nurturing tea sets can bring you happiness, basically that just taking care of your stuff is kind of give you some happiness. I, that's what I got from it. I don't know if that's what it actually said, but uh, I do find a lot of my happiness from tea culture comes from kind of taking care of the tea pads, taking care of the teapots. Yes. And actually, even though it's not related, gardening gives me kind of the same ah, buzz. I really I didn't that. like gardening when we first got started a few years ago, as you will know, right? But as I've done it, I've got more patient, more um, e easier to accept a slower reward and easier to anticipate, hey, it's not happening tomorrow, but it's coming if I just persist. Mm. Uh, so I think there's a difference between sort of immediate sort of happiness and sort of long-term happiness and i really think that's what they're talking about maybe with the tea give you that real happiness of taking care of stuff but i don't know maybe i read too much into it in that first part so for that's the, the gist of it that's the gist of it <laughs> i just wanted to share that with you guys to see if you agree it was a bit of a digression so fragrance cups um basically this is pretty okay right um, they're used for smelling the aroma in the bottom of a cup but, and for concentrating it a little bit. Um, they generally match the cups mm -hmm. and when you put them with a coaster and a tray, you got yourself a tea set. Mm -hmm. And they come in sort of the typical, the typical um, styles, porcelain as well as um, Zisha purple clay with glazed inside and uh, also pottery, but those would have to be glazed. Right. So, so here's a sample. Here is in the set. So usually the um, aroma cup is like tall and focused, right? Yeah, taller so, and have a little bit more space mm -hmm. for the aroma to um, kind of collect in layers. Right. Like right. a kind stratify of like, almost. Stratify. Mm. Mm -hmm, that's a good word. And this is the whole set. Like this one was talking about it all. You, it's really that you just buy just the aroma cup. Right. You usually come like the whole set with a tasting cup, right? Aroma cup and the saucer. 
But this mm -hmm. one is pretty cool because the saucer is a gourf shape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very cool. Right. And I actually learned in this section. I don't want to. I don't want to do a spoiler. So right, right, right. we'll get there, I guess. Okay. okay. Well, this tea really like. Uh, I think the kind of uh, the reason I wasn't fully paying attention to your talk was because I was really enjoying this. You're tea. getting into this tea, which yes. I totally understand. Almost and it like was a, really. My brew was slightly. Uh, earlier than yours, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it was a uh, slightly lighter, but the most feel was still very rich, and uh, mm. I just love that. Uh, how should I describe it? There is a certain tasting profile that I really like. The, the, the okay, maybe I, I can help. I'm not sure, but it has that, like you said, the mouth feel is divine, thick and rich. But for me, I. It's almost like a, this is going to be a weird note, but it's almost like a brown sugar, but not sweet. If yes. that's possible. Yes. You know, like a, like a malt, a malty, almost sweet. Mm -mm. Malty. Mm. That, I think that was what I like. The grain, mm. the dried grain, not, it's dried, just slightly roasted. It's, mm. You don't have roastiness in it, but you know that's not a, just a raw yeah. grain. It yeah. was, like that. There's no fire, but there's malt. Mm -mm -mm. There's that process of... Almost reminds mm. me of a little bit of a barley. Nice, yes. A little yes. bit of that. And mm. uh, now I have a more uh, more proper brew, I would say. Like a little bit more concentrated. Mm -hmm. Concentrated, I mean, <laughs> like a proper level of right. intensity. A little That's bit more really infused. really thick and that date sweetness. Mm. Like the whole tea is so sweet in zero sweet taste. Yes. Like just the profile of the tasting, uh, tasting profiles uh, always just reminds you of some sweetness. Right. Although it's not like one of those really tickling it's not your like taste buds. Sweet. That no, sort of that's thing. right. No, not at all. It's almost like implication of sweetness. <laughs> all right. Let's head back to the. Uh... Mm. You want to do the next? Yeah, I was going to head to the next section. Unless mm -hmm. you and did I miss? Did we miss anything? I don't think so. Let's do the next session, then look at the comments after. Oh yeah, Just good to call. Finish the yeah. um, aroma cup. We'll finish this the uh, aroma cup, right? So mm -hmm. selections. Generally, the fragrance. Oh, let me just come down a bit, or just go book only. Let's just show the book. Generally, the fragrance smelling cup is made of porcelain. If it is made of sand fire, the fragrance will be contained in it. Thus, for brewing and drinking, it is better to use sand fired. If simply used to smell the aroma, can the porcelain be better? Usage. One, for smelling, pour the tea soup into the sipping cup, then smell the cup with both hands holding or rubbing the fragrance smelling cup. Two, the fragrance smelling cup is usually used with pingming cup and saucer, hardly used singly. However, some tea set shops put the si single fragrance smelling cup on the tea table to decorate. Okay, so that was um, that was a little bit. Uh, mostly, it's mostly there, but I found it a little bit like a little bit confusing. Oh, so, it wasn't. Okay. Yeah, you know why? Because most of it's okay, but it. In the, so let's start with selections. Ying Sing drinking. Yeah, selections was okay. Basically, it's saying that it's made of porcelain, and if it's not porcelain, if it's like a, a, yeast, a zisha or. Hmm. Uh, pottery, it better be porter, glazed. Yeah, it's got to be glazed on the inside, or you're really going to get you absorption. Want a porous yeah, structure. But down under usage, I totally didn't didn't get this until, um, honestly, until I was working right. on the final translation. For the smelling, pour the tea soup into the sipping cup. I didn't catch that it's coming out of the aroma cup. So, the aroma cup gets the tea soup first, right? Yes. And then it goes into the sipping cup. I didn't get that, but maybe other people would have. It's not that it's not there. It's just that it's not clear mm. in this rendition. But that's what it is. You pour the tea soup from the sharing pot into the right. aroma cup, into the aroma cup, into the sipping cup. And maybe then it, we can put on the tea table view so that we yeah, can just sure. do a quick demonstration. Yeah, let's that do that. That's a great easy. idea. Cause just to, sorry, just to simplify because I don't have enough space on the mini tea table. So I'm just going to use this too, okay? The saucer usually comes with a saucer together, mm, but mm. and <laughs> for the gist of it. Real estate limited. <laughs> simplify. So you're going to warm it up first? Uh, no, oh. just use the water to 
Oh, demonstrate. water tea. This okay, is okay. simple demonstrate, right? So usually this is what the tea brewer would do for you. You don't have to worry about this part, right? The water goes directly in. This is the aroma cup, and uh, you, this is the tasting cup where you will be sipping from, and uh, put it on top. When it's uh, uh, if you are served the tea, usual sometimes you might do that yourself, but usually. Uh, people would uh, serve it up for you, so you don't have to worry too much. Right. So it was served like that, and you will see them doing this. Okay. This is why they're a match set, I guess. Yes. <laughs> volume the matters. Volume <laughs> and, and aesthetic. I, right. I think of course. If you read the book, you notice that it keep reminding you this and this has to ma match. The serving pot has to mm. match the guy one. Teacups have to match the mm -hmm, teapot kind mm -hmm, of just. Yeah. So usually when it's served in front of you, it's already like this. What you do is just a simply lift up the... I don't know if you cup. noticed, she did a real gentle twist there. So you probably don't want to just jar it off. Yeah, because it's a hot right. uh, liquor in it. Yeah. It has that uh, air tight. Yeah, air it's a little sealed. bit sealed, right? Yeah, yeah. So you just uh, give it a gentle one so it doesn't make a big splash. And here you go, you have your... Uh, aroma cup and you can start smelling it. Yeah, so show them how to do that because that's the next part. Mm. Um, usage number two is how do you smell that? So that's that's pretty clear though, right? You um, uh, put it between your two palms and roll it around and mm -hmm. give it a smell. So just uh, the key thing is inhale in front of the cup and exhale away. Right. So you don't inhale and exhale into the cup. Mm. And the rolling is just to help the aroma gently come out with mm -hmm. a little bit motion but some people just uh, do straight up smell right. it also works right which it also says in section two down here shall we change the yeah so that's basically the how to is down here and it's pretty understandable um, it has the two cup and the one and the one hand method mm -hmm. like in general unless oh, no. you're doing or sure. participating in a tea ceremony performance, like on the stage performance and stuff. It cares about how you roll left or right, right. which order and stuff. In normal uh, life, if you go to a tea shop and being served like that, uh, people wouldn't be too judgy. Like, right. you know, daily life and stage is different. That's right. You just, mm. what you want to grab in your regular use is just to make sure you get a nice smell of the aroma. And I think the most important tip you gave was you, Inhale from the cup and then look away and have your slow exhale so mm. you don't blow all the fragrance out of the cup. Mm -hmm. Nice. All right, we'll move on now to the... Uh, comment section? Yeah, you're right. Good call. Let's get some comments taken care of. I'm kind of a little bit all over the map. So yeah, we've got plenty here. So do you know where we left off? I really Level enjoy five. tea sets. I've got to get that, but I just want to draw. Oh, I, I oh, think we've got to go up. Uh, right, are we still behind? Right, right, right. Oh boy. Here we go. We're going to find your comments, guys. No comment left un <laughs> unturned. Oh yeah, so Josh says, yeah, we were talking right, about right. Josh's Dan Song craze. I've been really into Dan Song mood lately. Haha. <laughs> uh, was Shen before and Puar purely green tea before that. Sometimes I bounce around, but sometimes, yeah, I get... Yeah. Yeah, same here. Totally. We're like, uh, it's not uncommon for me to fall into a groove. Cindy says... And this, sometimes for me, it's just the habit. <laughs> Right, that too. Yeah. And Cindy says the smoke is pretty bad there. Terrible. Oh. Fernanda says, uh, here, full description, Black Yunnan Tuo 96, Fencing Shu Tuo 1996. Nice. nice, very nice. That must be delightful. Uh, thanks for sharing that. Mm. And um, Josh says, is the fragrance smelling cup Wen Xiangbei? Wen Xiangbei, yes. Mm. Yeah. Just to be sure that the name I've heard is correct. Yeah, that's yes, right. That. And when you check out the translation on our website, we have both. Mm. We keep the uh, the English name is the first one, but in brackets we have the uh, the pinion version of the name for those of you that are more familiar with it like that. And that's kind of a teaser for my big question coming up later. Um, and Jan says, I really like that bell-shaped that uh, bell-shaped cups. I must order some. Um, I guess the this uh, one. Oh, not, uh, his? I'm not sure. Is it this one that you like? This is a, a custom made by me. <laughs> <laughs> the not the cup, just the paint job. So when we were in um, um, Jingdezhi, the porcelain capital of the world, um, at least that's what I call it, 
I uh, got a chance to hand paint with a bunch of expert hand painters. It was really intimidating. So basically the fact- But he learned some tricks from- I learned a couple tricks, very basic, but the factory owner offered Jian Li and her to do a painting and they're like, oh no, 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 he'll do it. Cause I, <laughs> I can't understand to object immediately. So suddenly it's like, okay, they've got you all set up to do some painting. We're Don't. smart. Yeah, you're okay. really smart. Anyway, it was super fun. No, honestly, because my mom and I suck at the paintings. Like, it's really bad. Okay. Well, look, am I an expert? I don't think so. Look at that. That's a pretty nice spelling. <laughs> and he even, okay, it shows even better on mine, whatever. I did your mountains look. I want to say my mountain and the cloud. He learned that from those painters mm. to how to do the uh, deeper the tone. The misty, deeper tone or yeah. light tone. Yes. Because when it's going on the raw porcelain, the porcelain is not shiny and the paint is like a dull pinkish gray mm. and you can't really see if it's light or dark you got to just kind of know okay i put this much or not so anyway it was really interesting and mm. fun so um just let yeah the i think it's this one the bell shape i think that's the bell so cindy says uh i think taking care of the tea set can be very meditative i totally I absolutely 100 agree, agree. Mm. And uh, H.A. Holiday says, I've got to go, but I just wanted to drop in and say hi. Oh, I hope we didn't miss you, probably. But if you watched the replay, we still said hi back. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. <laughs> and Joss says, I really enjoy tea sets because I really find they improve and suit different moods and aesthetics. Mm. And that, that, that match, and aesthetics that match the moods. I feel transported when I drink different teas in sets that match them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's sort of related to Cindy's comment about that meditative aspect of being able to take you out of whatever it is that's going on and just be uh, sort of above yourself or an observer of your whole situation. Mm. And Johnny Loy says, hello from Tennessee and I finally mm -hmm. got to watch you live. Well, hello to you, Johnny Loy, and welcome to the uh, show. I'm really glad that you got to join us. And I love hearing where you guys Sunday are. Sunday tea show. <laughs> yeah, I love hearing where you guys are all from. Uh, mm. Tennessee, we've got California, we've got Czech Republic. I think there are uh, Igor's from Spain. I know Spain's in the house, so uh, just really exciting to be with you yes, guys. Yes, yes. Um, Cindy says, in my past notes of the uh, of the shoe uh, the shome I'm drinking, I also noted brown sugar notes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a pretty mm, pretty nice little note to get in shome. Josh says something very rustic for Hecha slash Tibetan tea, something very refined and porcelain for Ansi Oolong. Oh, back to the moo setting, right, matching right. your set with the tea. Yes. Yeah, that's sort of a really fun thing to do, right? And it brings mm. you to that, you know, maybe a more Tibetan vibe or a more yes. Chaozhou vibe or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree with that. Different combinations of brewing vessels usually and drinkware keeps things feeling novel and fresh each time yeah that's a good way to bump yourself out of the routine sometimes too it's just absolutely and also to keep your teaware from getting dusty right nobody wants us and no i'm not accusing anybody we're pr i think we're pretty good i we try to switch it up every now and then too right because you yes. want to just have a different cup and match it with the tea i'm big on puar glasses have to be glazed pottery or yes. not glazed pottery. No, has to be. There is only one cup that he uses. Other than that, he's like, where is my cup? <laughs> it's a cup. S <laughs> don't bust okay. me. Okay. You hear nothing from me. <laughs> Just for shoe puar. I'm a little more flexible with shem puar. <laughs> I have my shoe pu cup. Okay, that's true. Okay. And um, vessel is normal. Yeah. And Cindy says, I've only used smelling cups in tea shops. I don't own any. Are they only used with fragrant oolongs or also with other teas? That's a fantastic mm, question. That's a great question. Really good question. It's a, uh, how should I say? You can use that with any tea you want, basically. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, it will be with oolong because it was invented for the oolong ceremony. Mm. So that's why uh, you probably wouldn't see that in tea houses using that for any tea. Mm -hmm. They would more stick to yeah. the tradition. Right, of using that with an oolong. Yes. Great, that was a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. and, and oolong is a kind of tea that is a very more prominent or uh, aroma is a major mm -hmm. part of it. Right. Like, I mean, compared to, uh, say, shu puar or shen puar, mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. they all have aroma, but it's different yeah. than oolong. And then you, or something like what Josh is having, right? A dan song, which is, yeah. right? Tend to be pretty explosive and wonderful. 
So then uh, Chigaz says, we recently made our own aroma cups. They are great mm. for, um, they are great for specializing, no, appreciating, sorry, appreciating fragrant oolongs. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You totally uh, got the words right That's out of our mouth. High end. Yeah. And you, yeah, it's cool. So you, I guess it was a pottery kind of setup where you actually got to, was, were you on a wheel? I'm just curious and spin that or... Let us know. know. I'm, I'm yeah, asking. Yeah. I'm asking Chigas. Like, if was yeah. it like spun up? Like, you had to do that really delicate, and that's yeah. pretty cool. Let us know. And Jan says your paintings are nice. Thank you. Thank you. That's very, very, very gracious of you. I appreciate it. And Fernanda says I am from south of Brazil. Oh, cool. Oh. And this channel was an amazing discovery. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh thank you. Thank you for joining us. We're mm. so glad. We're so glad you're here, everybody. All, of the, uh, all the new faces and all the regular faces mm -hmm. th that we see. Okay, we don't actually see your face, but <laughs> it just sounds better than icons. Anyway, really, icons. thanks for joining us. <laughs> we're super glad you're here, and I'm glad you mm. found our channel. It's really fun to do this. You bet. All right, we're gonna head back into the book. And we're going to talk about the uh, filter shelf. Mm. Okay, so in the last episode, we talked about the tea filter. Mm -hmm. This time, we're talking about that little doodad. I'll just highlight it for you guys. Coming down a bit. This guy right here, the filter shelf or the filter holder, perhaps. Mm. Um, functions. It is used to lay up the filter. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you no. know this. Lay up. It's just funny. It sounds like a basketball move, right? <laughs> Right? Oh, sorry, that's a slam dunk, but layup is a basketball move. How you oh, I, two I steps it in. Anyway, okay. it's used to lay up the filter. Types. The materials are porcelain, stainless steel, iron, and so on. There are various styles of shelves such as animal shapes, human hand shapes, etc., which have decoration, which have decorative effect, decoration effect. Selections. It is easy. Uh, it is easy for iron filter shelf to get rusty, so that it so that it is better to choose porcelain and stainless steel as the materials. Usage: If you choose the iron filter shelf, you should clean and dry up, dry up it in time, rather than soaked in the water for a long time. All right. So let's go back to the top of this one and get our impressions. Mm -hmm. So functions, totally fine. Types, totally fine. I mean, it holds the filter. Mm. Um, it's made of those typical materials that you would expect it to be made of that are not going to, that are going to endure being wet and dry a lot and not fail or get bad. They even mention under selection to avoid, you know, s steel ones. If you need, you're going to go with metal, go with stainless because they are going to get wet. And if you don't dry them right away, they're going to get rusty. So all of that I felt was really pretty straight up it's pretty, yeah um, yeah and even usage just says clean that up if you do go with a steel one so I didn't have any real problems interpreting this mm. um, so Same feeling here yeah I think I'll go straight into the next section yes tea ceremony sets okay guys here we go getting fun now it's gonna be some show-and-tell there's gonna be some really cool stuff going on so first it's tea ceremony sets but obviously it means ceremony um, functions. Tea sets, which is the general term of tea container, tea tongs, tea funnel, teaspoon, tea scoop, and tea pin. Okay, tea pin. I'll leave the Chinese on the page at the mm -hmm. top. Tea pin. It is used, so guys, in case you're, so the English is down here in case you're following along. Tea pin. It is used to clear the block of the spout of teapot. Tea tongs. It is used to carry the cup while warming or fetching for others. Teaspoon. It is used to get tea from the tea holder or tea canister. Okay, and I'm going to carry on with the rest of the tools because these are so fun. Um, tea scoop. It is used to fetch dry tea from the tea canister. Tea funnel. It is put at the mouth of the pot while putting in tea. It is used to prevent tea overflowing by enlarging the mouth of the pot. And tea uh, container. It is used to set tea tongs, tea funnel, teaspoon, and tea scoop, and tea pin. All right. Mm -hmm. I think, do you want to just stop on the page or finish the section? The I section. Think the stop or the page. Sure. 
and maybe show some tools off. Yes, just to clear up the tool okay. usage. So I'll go through the names. First, mm -hmm. um, in terms of the functions, uh, I really found just about everything, oh, no, everything was okay. I think it was all pretty clear. Understandable, eh? Yeah, pretty understandable in the broadest sense. Um, definitely understandable. T container is, as I really feel, that's totally misnamed. Mm. That needs to be called T tool. T -tool, tool container. Otherwise, you can't tell it from the container you put your actual T in. Mm. But that's a little bit of a detail. But where I think it gets interesting. Okay, okay. I have a question. Ping. Do you put that T ping? Like, is that a ping? Is that ping? It's not an inaccurate name in terms of its form. Do you right. want to go to um, full size? Just, just like the... So that's the T-pin for clearing the right. spout. But I had another point about the teaspoon. So can I have the teaspoon? So there, yes. there is one shown called teaspoon. But you'll all know that this is also a teaspoon. So it kind of made me wonder. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, it kind of made me wonder. Like, And then I got to thinking like these names are a little bit like T-pin as well. People would hear T-pin, but they right. might be like, what the heck is that? Like it's so, such a foreign concept. If you're, let's say you're drinking black tea on the regular mm -hmm. from a pot, Western style, what mm -hmm. the heck is a T-pin? And if you hear teaspoon, I think you'll almost certainly think of this and not of this. A that teaspoon doesn't... and tablespoon kind of spoon, right? Correct, correct. Ah. So it made me wonder. And then when I thought about our tea, we keep the pinion names of the tea to keep that clear. And I thought, I wonder if it's better, and Josh, you kind of hinted at this earlier, maybe these tools should also just have pinion names for clarity. I don't know. I'm throwing it out. What do you guys think would be a good name for this in English? It's really not spoon-shaped, and uh, we'll get into it. It's not used for spoon. No, no, right? no. It's not really used as a spoon. I like... think here is the thing. Just to anchor what you just said about the name use pinion. First, most of them have their... Uh, like special as a tea term, a mm, unique, that's what I their mean. own mm. name. However, some of them could be confusing too in the tea name because uh, like the tea scoop, right? It causes a cha zi here. Cha zi. But uh, sometimes you will also hear people saying cha zi as a tea displayable, like what we use for tea leaves. Right. So there are also right. a little bit of confusion even in Chinese because mm -hmm. it's a, you know, yeah. a lot of people were and, doing this. And I'm kind of reading ahead, but Josh just pointed out in the mm -hmm. comments that he's always heard of it as a tea pick. But I think, I don't know if you would call this a tea knife, but I think I would call the, this a tea pick myself, the one for breaking off puar, which this is not really suitable for. It this would, is a mean sewer, uh, not sewer. <laughs> <laughs> But it's like a sewer clear snake kind of function, right? A, clear a sewer the... snake, oh, yo. Right, right. It's just but that's for... the function of it. Yeah, yeah. It's not to pick on, like you can use that to pick on tea leaves, to separate them for better observation. But the purpose is more of a drainage mm. clearance for mm. like a teapot, right? So if it's blocked with a leaf, that's how you unplug. Or a tea table. Some people have the drainage to the uh, bucket. Right, right. You, uh, sometimes they got blocked by tea leaves. I use this to clear. Mm -hmm. Just the function is for that. So Yeah, so tea I guess um, I guess if that's, <laughs> if that's what you, the tea pick is used for, I guess that's the right one. But I just wanted mm -hmm. to make sure we weren't thinking of the tea pick that we use to break tea or right. the tea knife. I usually right. call that a tea, tea knife. Because knife um, yes, yes. But when you say that the, the, even the Chinese terms can also be confusing to a non, a native Chinese that's not a tea person, mm. that kind of makes me think pinyin is a good way to go for those too. Because then if you're talking to a Chinese or a Westerner, basically what's the good thing about using a pinyin word is it's, unfortunately, they're often hard to say. Mm. But the good thing is, is it, all, it will often make people go, oh, well, what's that for? Right. Per perfect. Now so you can explain. You, you have a chance to actually talk clarify. more. Otherwise, if you talk about teaspoon and you want to explain, then everybody feels like, oh, I knew it. Or subconsciously exactly. shut down not to even pay yeah. more attention. And then when they see it, they're like, what, do you, what the heck? That's mm. your teaspoon? Right. They might not even notice that it's your teaspoon. Right. And mm. tetons are those. Mm -hmm. This is like when we rinse cup. I think here it says a carrier 
cup while warming or fetching for others, mm. right? Um, we use that uh, to serve cups. Like basically in all the tea service, when other people serve you tea and stuff, we don't want to touch uh, the, the, the where I surface. drink and right. everything. So use those. None of those are supposed to touch your hand yeah. when it's this. But um, this is a, it's a useful and not very useful for daily use because not every not every cup has the perfect shape. Right, they might like be slippery in your yes, tongs, right? If this is really shallow and with the, the, the bamboo the, texture or something, yeah. it doesn't grip. Uh, like this cup, I wouldn't feel very comfy it might just slip. to lift it. Mm -hmm. This cup, really easy. I can go all the way deep. Yeah. So, uh, that reminds me of, this is a little bit off topic, but the t in terms of Tetong usage, the when we were in um, um, Chuenzhou and uh, in Guan, Guangdong and South Fujian, those, tea guy, those guys all use the tongs on a daily basis, right? Yes. The way they wash the teaware is notice, just like... Yes. They, they do this kind of a quick, they just grab the side and quickly yeah. rotate it Fill the guy without want. this hand. Yeah, and just rotate the cup in the guy wants so the whole rim is sanitized but in the hot water. It's did amazing. Did you notice what tongs they use? They don't use those uh, tea performance tongs. No, they have metal with a little grippy. It's, it's a, like a medical tongue. Mm. Like uh, the standard steel that uh, the, the nurses yep. old times yep. might use that to grab the alcohol swab, uh, swab yep. or something. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that. It, but it matches their set because it's a stainless tray. Yeah, they, they drink tea <laughs> so often they yeah. only care about practical, not yeah. the, uh, you know, the, the, the look. All right. So right. maybe hit, hit the comment uh, section here quickly, see if anything yes. came in. Yes. Oh, and just uh, one more thing oh, about right. uh, teaspoon. a teaspoon. Uh, the, the important thing is this is not a, like a spoon. We're mm -hmm. thinking of getting stuff out of something to somewhere yeah, else. More like this the scoop. This one is not. Yes, this one is like a, how do I say that? Like a get. It's a, more like sweeping or kind sweeping. of um, just dragging the tea if it gets a little bit stuck. I just get that yeah, out. Yeah, if it gets a little stuck in here, you just encourage it to keep moving. Right. Rather than scooping that out, mm. I yeah. push it up, sweep it up. Yep. Kind of. So that's that's the main function. Because it of just that. say get tea in the book. It says uh, it used to get tea from the tea holder to uh, or a tea canister. Yeah, it's, it's, it really it's sounded clear like how. It, yeah, it really sounded like you're like it was doing the exact function of this. Especially, it's already if translated as a spoon. Yeah, yeah. So that is the gear. I think the funnel, I think most funnel people, should be pretty clear. funnel's pretty clear, but just in case people have never needed to use one, it's basically if your tea, you know, if you've got a big tea leaf in your, or not so big, but you just need some help not spilling the tea, getting it into your teapot. You don't put it on the sharing pot like this, but just to show. Mm. All right. Want to check out some uh, comments? Yeah, let's check out some comments. So where do we leave off? Um, this channel, oh yeah. Chigas, we have our own pottery studio with a wheel and kiln. Oh, Ooh. nice. Very cool. So you must be a potter then. That's high end. You can have a kiln. Uh, and Jan says, well, I will try it with Tsimen because I have two, two really great versions of this tea. And Tsimen is, could, could be suitable for Aroma Cup, I think. Mm. Try it out and I let us so. know how that affects the smell that you... Yeah, yeah. I really love the bottom cup of black tea typically, so I think mm. it might be very interesting. I dropped teacups several times when I was trying to use that tweezers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I saw those guys doing that, I had to try it and uh, I dropped, but I knew I would be clumsy, so I didn't break any, thank heavens, but mm. I definitely also had to try it. And I got a little bit decent at it. Usually they do their, their teacup is the traditional shape. That has an inward, a slight inward curl. Mm -hmm. That a ping pong mm -hmm. cup. Yeah, ping pong So ball. it's re relatively easy. But now we have so many different shapes of teacups. It's really just yeah, be you, careful when you're using that. Yeah, you got to choose your cup right. Mm. And um, yeah, tea tweezers, tea tongs. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Josh says tea pin, right? I kind of jumped ahead to that. Heard of it as a tea pick. Mm. Yes, me too, tea pick. Tea taunts. Yeah, I'm so curious to see if they got back to us about which one. So Josh said, I've also okay. thought cha zi was called tea scoop, but I was also informed by a friend that it might mean tea measurer. And yeah, I've heard puar pick for the breaker and tea pick for the spout cleaner. Ah, I see. Oh. 
And also I say Puar knives slash tea knives too, especially because mine as well, knife shaped. Yeah, same with ours. Whereas mm. picks are usually like a spike, spike rather than a flat blade, like ice picks. Yeah, mm. but I have seen a lot of folks for mm. their puar breaking use a metal pick. Yes, it's pointy yes. and not with no blade. Mm -hmm. mm. And Johnny says, I would call it a tea scrap, not teaspoon. A tea scrape? Tea, tea scrape, maybe? I wonder if he meant oh. scrape. But I like that. I like that because that's pretty much what we're doing. I couldn't find, I couldn't think of that word earlier. T scrape. This is like tea kind scrape. of yeah, yeah, yeah. I was could only I was stuck on sweep, but it's like it's not it's not a broom. It's more of a scrape. Yeah, it's not like a spatula. Mm. Johnny, mm. thank you. That's exactly what we love better. from you guys. Just yes. give us some help when we're stuck, because we get in our mindset sometimes and we can't pop out. So mm. I think I might uh might, I tea might be updating the I uh, didn't translation. even think about a teaspoon like you said. Right, like I this. Just, I because a teaspoon is a measurement tool, right for you guys. No. Yes, but it's oh. also all of these little ones. Are they are, standard size? No. Oh, okay. No, but we still call them teaspoons, especially oh. the. I, that's why I brought a cutesy little one, because oh, okay. there's people who actually collect cute little teaspoons that might have the logo of a, a city or a tourist attraction or. A, oh. Yeah. There's I didn't a, know that. Yeah, and they're they're usually like they're part of an English tea set too. I think. I'm not an expert in that domain, but. Um, yeah, it's a real it's a real thing with tea. Oh, okay, okay. Right? I didn't even think of that. For me, it's mm -hmm. just that's not spoon shape and not spoon function. Yeah. I was like... So far, mm. tea scrape is the winner. <laughs> yeah. So far. So far. All right. And Yan says, traditional Chinese teapots didn't have any kind of strainer. The hole mm. could be blocked easily. Therefore, yes. the tea pick. Mm -hmm, exactly. Mm. And Josh says, oh, yeah, I have the metal tongs too. Because even though I love the wooden tongs, look, I hate them because they are so, so slippery, slippery and totally. always drop my cups. Yes, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I have never dropped a cup once with the metal. Yeah. Cindy says, my teaspoon is basically a little twig. I would never have thought to refer to it as a spoon, but it scrapes Split. the tea. Yes. yes, it scrapes the tea from the holder to the potter guy one. Yeah. Mm. Scrape is taking a I strong a lead. Yeah. Josh says, and you've convinced me I started a pot of dental. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And Milan Siang, to be specific, yeah, I have a spike puar breaker too, but I've cut myself a few too, few too many times, so only for the very well compressed cakes. Yeah, you got to take it super slow with the spikes. Mm. And um, oh, and always call the spoon tea pusher, just because I use it most to push tea out of the tea display vessel. Yes, mm. what's that called? We're getting to that standby where I have my leaves. Yes, perfect. Where he weighs the leaves. Awesome. So this is great. Really good, really good um, feedback from you guys. I'm loving mm, it. Mm, mm. I'm I loving like it. the scrape. I will update. I will update the yeah uh, translation. translation. I, I love think it. It's I love way it. I think that's teaspoon. that's better. Over to the book. Fantastic. Have some tea. Oh, so we're in the middle of okay types. We're still on tea tools, guys. Right, right. right. Types. It is usually made of. Oops, I gotta move that so they can see the words. Here. Thank you. Take a break. Have, have a little tea. sip. Because I'm go, gonna have another pot coming. Need Beauty. Space. Did Beauty. you ever push people or I do force it all the time. them to drink? It's so Cause... not zen. I do that yeah, with yeah. you all the time because I'm trying to make the kettle stay hot. So the tea has to kind of be flowing at a certain pace, which shows that I'm not good at selecting the right gaiwan size. Because ideally you want to size the gaiwan so you don't have to pressure your guests to drink the tea. But I'm always like, hey, drink up. There's more water. <laughs> Okay, types. It is usually made of bamboo and wood, like we just saw. Mm -hmm. The shape is frequently showed as a straight tube, square, or, oh, this is, sorry, are we on, oh, this is yes. specific to tea container. It, right? Um, uh, yes, kind of, yes. Okay. It is usually, okay, the shape is frequently showed as straight tube, the, square, the first, or base. The uh, first sentence is the whole thing because they are matching. The right. second one was in Chinese pretty uh, specific, the container usually in these shapes. Right. Mm. Let me get on to my page too. Selections. According to personal preference to select tea sets, the vase shape is elegant, the square shape is simple and generous. It is better... Uh, to coordinate with other tea sets, then you can, then you will get more fun and interest. Usage. 
One, while fetching, pay attention not to touch or hold the places where we'll contact with tea. Two, it is the auxiliary equipment of brewing tea. It provides decency and elegance for the whole brewing process. Okay, so let's head back up here. I love that decency. So types is, um, is okay. Mm -hmm. Tea holder, oh, I'm a little bit ahead, sorry. Types is okay, yes. I was wondering though, um, in terms they talk about the shapes, you might have a circle or a square, minimalist or whatever. Um, it was a little bit hard to understand minimalist. I didn't quite catch up. But I was wondering if you guys have tea sets, do you have any funky holders for them that you really kind of like with nice mm. designs on them or anything like that? Mm -hmm. um, and selection is, um, sorry, selections was pretty good, right? It's just pretty much bamboo, just like we saw, or wood. Um, not too much going on there. Mm. And as you said, in usage, we want to not touch where the, tea, where the person's mouth or where the tea liquor is gonna go. Yes. Um, just for hygiene. And on decency, I think, I'm not sure I would have used the word decency, but it provides a certain, um, well, they said elegance and um, sort of, and I convenient, thought of. convenient, but a kind of hygienic, right. kind of a mix. Convenience and a, hygiene, right? Yes, mm. in a very elegant. Right. Right. Makes the hygiene look less oh, hygiene and more just keeping things flowing and clean. Yeah, but the presentation is better than just feel like I'm cleaning everything. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, so um, I think that's it. I don't see comments, so I want to move on to the tea holder. Yes. However, I have to interrupt you for one second. Sure thing. Oh, that's it. Oh, good call. Perfect. I wasn't sure if that's the... Yeah, I usually plug Otherwise, it in. Otherwise, we might just... Yeah, we might get disconnected. We're running low on battery here, oh, so I didn't, yeah. I didn't here plug in. Yes. Something else to add to my checklist. <laughs> it's getting better and better, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All longer right. and longer. Yeah, longer and longer for sure. Tea holder functions. Mm -hmm. The function of the tea holder is the same like tea scoop and tea funnel which is used to hold the dry tea temporarily. But it also has a function of appreciation, especially in the tea art performance. Types, the materials are porcelain, bamboo, wood, stone, etc. It is frequently seen the tea holder with white porcelain inside. It is either practical or treated as an artwork. Usage, pay attention to not touch the gap with your hands while fetching tea. Two, the standard movement is that holding the two sides of the holder with thumb and the other four fingers, putting it between the thumb and forefinger with the other hand at the bottom, then for guest. Okay, so first, um, tea holder, thank you. I honestly got a little bit confused as I read through the sections because I wasn't sure, but there was, there's a picture up here which gave me a hint, but it wasn't my, oh, down here, which gave me a hint but I'm not that familiar with this shape of tea holder. Um, I'm more familiar with this shape here. Mm. So I didn't, it took me actually a while to figure out and because it started, why did it take me a while to figure out what we're talking about? Because they talk about the way it's phrased here is it has, it's the same like a teaspoon or a tea funnel, which really I think it's not unless you're in the context of it holds tea. So that threw me right off, I have to say, because the funnel doesn't even hold tea. It actually, it's actually, it's only the same if you mean it gets tea from the container to the brewing vessel. Mm. And that way it's the that's, same. That's what it means. Ah, yes. so it took me, a, I was just kind of- Temporarily you know, from uh, the yeah. uh, container, tea storage container to the teapot. Yeah, it wasn't down here until, um, here I started to get the hint, okay, it's also so we can appreciate it. So I'm like, oh, mm. right? So instead of just dumping it from the container into the teapot or the vessel, right? We get a chance to smell it and look at the dry leaf and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I started to figure it out. So I found that was a little chunky. Mm. Um, this is also, uh, many of those, they, these kind of accessories are the child of a tea ceremony performance. Mm, right. Mm. Under types, I think everything was fine. Um, yeah. I think treated as artwork, 
is just a little bit, of, it sounds really fancy, like maybe people collect them like teapots, but I have a feeling it just means that they might no, have, it's just they a, might have some nice artwork on them yes, like this, right? It's just a, it's a practical and aesthetic right. kind of thing. Right. Yeah. So, um, so in Chinese, is tea holder, do you call that tea holder? Do you guys call this tea holder? Uh, tea yeah probably I, right I actually changed it because in the translation I think you're gonna mention bowl oh right I forgot uh, we had so we <laughs> had originally translated it as tea, tea bowl, bowl but I felt like that of was how we call it yeah but it's really confusing I think f for Westerners because it's not really a bowl shape mm -hmm. and also I think the bowl presents oh, would you call the, the picture shape a bowl shape Neither, no. No, this is not a bowl shape. Sorry. Sorry, the Lord. This guy here, yeah. I wouldn't call that a bowl myself. I don't know, I'm curious to know what you guys would say about that, but um, a bowl has pretty much got to be pretty much just like this. It has to be like big. that. Huh? And I think they present in other tea ceremonies. I think like for matcha, for whisking matcha, that's a bowl. Oh, for me, and it's okay, probably called a tea that. bowl. Right, right, right. So I felt like that might be really confusing for people, so I wanted to... Mm go back to their their word tea holder i think is pretty tea good okay pretty good anybody got anything better yeah totally up for share that share with uh, us your thoughts and what you hear uh, heard about so this one in chinese we call that a cha he uh the the tradition traditional ish uh, look is basically one wider open the narrow opener it, opener the narrow side is where the tea would come out from here. Oh, well, this this is where like I use the tea scrape to get out. Yeah, because your out. bigger leaves tend to choke up there. Okay. And uh, so that's the key element is this opening. Like the picture shows that, that one look almost like a tea cup with a little opening. Mm. Or still a, function. Or like a that. creamer. It looks yes. almost like something that you would put your uh, cream in. Yes, yes, because right? it has a little leg around it. Or a gravy a bowl. Bottom. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's a gravy bowl. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. So, um, but if you watch our video, you notice I'm, I'm quite lazy because uh, those are really small. If the leaves are really big, I have to dun, 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 do that forever. So I'm those super, don't, it's not official. But. Super practical but super not following the etiquette. Yeah, I often use this side to get the Y side, so it's quicker. Mm. What would your mother say? <laughs> Don't do it. Mm. <laughs> Don't tell her. <laughs> and, and if you guys do it, we also won't tell her, so it's totally fine. Yeah, she feel like, don't do that. It's uh, just not elegant. Lacks elegance, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, she thinks I'm too, uh, too... In a hurry, and then you do need to exercise your patience a little bit. Yes. <laughs> I'm in big trouble now. All right, let's take it to the common hey, land before yes. I... Oh, oh, we gotta... But however, uh, in Chinese, sometimes you will see those ones. I don't have that. Uh, also, the same function, but they might also know as a cha zhe, z-e. Instead of he, he h-e. Yeah, mm. it's a, while in this book, the previous T scoop is known as cha zhe. Mm. So that's what I mean. Sometimes in the... Even in Chinese, uh, when we talk about that, there's a certain confusions and right. uh, it's you know, not zigzag it's not perfectly defined. It's not like a strict thing. It just you got to clarify. Yeah, it's more like uh, talk about it because there are the uh, some people who are more professional trained and lots of people here say here say, but still in the industry, so cause that. I it's not a major problem. Just everybody talk a little mm -hmm. bit more, explain mm -hmm. knows what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So where do we leave off in the comments here? Spike. Oh, oh last thing, last thing. Yeah, I sure. think the English translation in this book to say how to hold it might be confusing. Okay. Was it confusing? Let me uh, check here. So. How to, oh. How to hold this if you want to know. Oh, sorry, I got a little mixed up there. Over to the book. Right. The hold it. Yes, that was to I don't want them to mix up big time here. Here we go. Right, it says... Uh, st oh, yeah, right? sorry. I totally dropped the ball on that because I have a note there beside number two mm -hmm. that simply says, huh? I, <laughs> I actually tried to go through this and I couldn't figure it out. 
So you're yeah. right. I, I I had trouble understanding this a hundred percent. Right. So basically, hold it like this ish. Oh, here. oh, sorry. I'll go okay. to the straight one. So it's easier. however you like. Uh, okay, that work. Okay. So one finger here, rest of the finger here, and uh, the other hand, left-handed, right-handed doesn't matter. Just lightly hold the button so that uh, again, this is for displaying, imagining tea performance. More like performance, right? Yes, mm. a ceremony, and you have the guests sitting here. So you give them each one a look of the leaves. Uh, this is right. how you show them. So. Nice. Yeah. Good call. Mm. I miss that. And again, the translation, we're doing the finished up translation with a few tweaks that you guys have helped us with mm -hmm. will be up on our website at the end. Yes. All right. Now we'll go back to the comments. Mm -hmm. So find it, find it, find it. Oh, here we go. Right here. Oh, right. Yeah. I have five T2 holder. Five T2 holders that I use all at once. Uh -huh. they, <laughs> they, are all, they are all small vases. I have one mm. bright blue, hand-blown glass, one clear glass, one bamboo, one blue-white porcelain, and one ceramic I made. Whoa, so many people making Whoa. stuff. That's awesome, guys. Awesome. And Jan says, some tea holders can have kind of funnel shape on one side. Can be used as funnel to get the tea leaves inside the brewing vessel. Mm, mm. That's really practical. Mm. Mm. Except you might have to take out all your tools to get your tea leaf in. But once you're done, you're good. I think it's called tea scoop. I'm mm. not sure if I have Czech expression for it. Mm. Was that referring from the teaspoon? Because the um, we kind of reserve scoop for this guy. Because this is mm. the um, this is the guy who actually does this sort of gently scoop up and put the tea into the um, tea holder. Okay, yep, for matcha, cha wan translates from Japanese as tea bowl. Mm. Mm. Yeah, cha wan so, is also bowl. Like right. Chinese is also right, cha wan. really straight to tea bowl. Mm -hmm. mm. Term tea holder makes more sense. Tea holder. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for the input. Mm -hmm. I heard cha he called two things by others. Tea scoop, which is confusing since also called cha zi. And by really formal people, tea presentation vessel. Oh, oh, this guy here, right? Yes. Right. That's pretty Chahu. pretty wordy, right? That's pretty much uh, the function of this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, and Jan says maybe I call it like tea measurable. Oh, this guy here, right? Right. A lot tea of people measurable. use it to weigh their tea. Right, they put that on the scale, tear oh, it out, and then they put measurable. it on. So that's okay, not a bad okay. one. That's okay. not a bad one. Tea presentation, tea measure, both mm. are pretty descriptive in terms of what you're using them for. I like those. I really like those I guys. I think I prefer presentation. Yeah. That kind of flavor as is close to what is the yeah. original thing. But of course, you can use that for anything. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Mm. And um, though you have to read that, that's cha. Zhe. Cha. Z -E. Z -E is more of a caddy spoon. spoon thought. Okay, Chigas thought that cha zu was more of the. What's a caddy spoon? Uh, this guy, I think. Is this what you mean, uh, Chigas? I think, right? Caddy spoon. Okay, I, I don't know. Okay. I'm not sure what they mean by caddy, but just Sometimes more of a scoop. Sometimes they call those a uh, uh, scoop shape. I don't have that to hear. A handy. caddy is a holder. Holder, right? Mm. But uh, cha zi, I found a lot of people use those like uh, also same mm. uh, function, but it's those longer, almost a half of the bamboo shape. You know? Sorry, I got okay. sidetracked okay. because Fernanda said yes, perfect caddy, and she's right. Actually, that's almost the perfect name for this. Oh, tea caddy because it kind of holds the tea. What do caddies do? They take things from one place to the other. Tea caddy. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we've got it here, guys. Mm. I think. How do you guys feel about tea caddy? I think I love it. Okay. Um, okay. I we think... call those protective things a tea, a teapot caddy or tea, tea cozy caddy. Uh, those are like uh, we have oh. those. Uh, Padded like a cotton and a oh, fabric padded, right? Padded right. Uh, okay. things to yes for uh, travel, like a kind of like a travel set. set that you mm -hmm. can put your teacup or teapots or gaiwan in it, right. so they are protected when you're on the yeah. go. We we call that a 
caddy. Yes. So, but it, it, the full the name same. of that would be tea set caddy. Tea set caddy. Or tea this is a caddy? tea caddy. This is tea caddy. Okay. Oh. Okay. So okay. I think, but you got it. Like they're you guys both, are English. I they're just both are using to the word caddy perfectly, okay. right? So I think I think I love it. I want to know what you guys think about caddy. I think we're uh, mm. we're laying down the law for T tool terms here. No, not the <laughs> law. Just kidding. Just some recommendations and stuff. Right. right. Okay. This is really really fun. Mm. I knew this would be an exciting session yes, for yes. getting uh, working together. And Chiga says, maybe a tea leaf appreciation tray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Too many words. She's going to veto that. <laughs> but, but I think Caddy nails it. More of a description than a name. Yeah, yeah, totally. And Jan says, oh, I have there a type error. It's supposed to be tea scoop. Mm. I, think I, I think I got that. Yeah. Tea scoop, right. Mm. Um, I think that's this guy though, right? Tea scoop. And Josh says, yeah, I used to be a potter for about a year, haha, for fun. And sporadically before that, I made about half of my teaware ish. No wonder you have such a big right, I was, I thought I you, was like, whoa. I thought he had a bad addiction, which I think may also be the case, but we'll... <laughs> we'll be nice to you. I definitely use cha he to measure my tea on my scale too. Right, mm, right. Mm. I think that's pretty common if mm. you're going to measure your tea. People usually call tea storage canister jars caddy. Not sure why, lol. I don't love that word for it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. They You're that right that they do too. that, but I really feel like they've appropriated, they've misappropriated the right the word we need. So I think I'm going to take it anyway. <laughs> but you're right. I don't know why somebody would call a storage container a tea caddy. I guess because you yeah, can why? put it in your pocket and go around Not with supposedly. it. supposedly. Not supposed Unless to. Unless there's a travel size mini one, but right. usually we talk about tea containers. We want a big. Yeah, yeah. I would call uh, that. Well, yeah. here is the thing. That's why it's very confusing when we talk about Chinese tea. Is many people we just, uh, you know, second language or second language. Sometimes when we just uh, mm. come up with whatever was on top of my mind, rather than what's the really accurate, or spend much time to really dig. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so. and just explain. And Josh yeah. says he never heard of caddy for cha he, which is we are kind of going into new t new domain. So maybe it's best just to stick with cha he and explain. Mm. Um, back to the sort of better to have a mysterious word that gets you to f explain that than to try and say a mm. word that might be thought, oh, that's something else, like caddy. Mm. But um, what oh, about... Like, like our... Uh, the, the series named Sunday Tea Book, we're gonna call that Sunday Tea Red, but I feel, but we realize that Tea Red is a... Tea Read, yeah. A Tea Read is seem to be more, people are thinking about uh, reading the tea leaves and stuff, which right. would, is not what we're doing. So yeah, that's yeah, why we so now it's it. Sunday Tea Book and just yeah. kind of... So I guess sometimes if there's a common either misunderstanding or just a common agreement on certain terms, maybe we shouldn't mess up with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what else have we got? We've got lots of input here. I think now we're moving away from caddy. I'm not sure, but it's mm. Yan likes it. Uh, it's nice, but Josh had a good point. Appreciation candy. I like the yeah. candy <laughs> caddy. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. I, I, I saw like that. That. I like that. That was uh, Chigas as well, right? Or presentation Chigas, caddy. Yes. Chigas, I think tea caddy refers too much to a tea mm -hmm. canister. I think unfortunately they're right. Josh said it and he mm -hmm. said it and I have heard people say that. Hmm. Tea canister, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, they stole caddy from us. I like tea <laughs> presentation bowl, haha, <laughs> or honestly, just opinion. Mm. Mm. Tea presentation bowl or just opinion, cha he. Yeah, I think that's where I'm leaning now, just cha he. Mm. I do enjoy the fact that you think my addiction to teaware didn't directly drive my pottery habit. Mm. <laughs> oh, right. Maybe it was the other way around. Could mm. be. Yeah, I've only ever heard caddy for canister and a lot okay. of brands use that phrasing. So I think it might get confusing to use that. Mm. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Um, even though they're wrong. Um, <laughs> let's call it tea check bowl. Mm. Mm, tea check bowl. <laughs> tea check bowl. Tea check bowl. Not bad. I think the middle ground is, and I think what Jan is getting at is more like tea presentation yeah, or tea to give appreciation the function bowl. Yeah, of that, checking the tea, have yes. a look at it, yes. examine the leaf, maybe smell the dry leaf aroma. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Awesome well, session. I think that's really very awesome useful. Awesome session. And, uh, yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah, definitely never, learned a lot. Uh, usually, I don't dig so much into specific words yeah. when I'm trying to explain, but this would 
definitely give me more hint、yeah. next time、mm-hmm. when I talk to people, especially when people who are just getting into tea. I should be more careful about the words I'm using. Yeah, yeah,、mm-hmm. awesome. So、um, I think that's going to wrap up our session of Sunday Tea Book for、uh, this week. Don't、yes. miss out next week. There's another super fun topic. <laughs> I think a lot of you might really love this topic coming up.、Mm-hmm. Um, tea pets are on the list for next week, so I, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I can't imagine anybody would want to miss I that. I have to say, this book in this turn is after this. You basically cover all the things you could possibly see on the、Everything. tea pet or anything. Yeah, yes, it's really thorough. I love that, and.、Um, And yeah, so tune in next week to catch、mm-hmm. our our next installment of China Tea on Sunday Tea Book.、Mm. And、uh, if you like this kind of content where we dive into lots of details about、mm-hmm. Chinese tea and culture, and in this case, the way we're calling the tea set, so that everybody can understand, give us a thumbs up. And、uh, I think that's it. Until、mm-hmm. next time. A little preview. Oh, oh. A little preview.、Uh, something is coming up on our、mm, live channel.、One. We have been doing this.、Uh, Weekly、uh, Sunday tea read,、oh、and、uh, I think this gave us a great chance to explore this、uh, tool. And you know, we wanted to use this to do more. So we are launching a monthly presentation、mm-hmm. um, series, and it's coming up. So if you want to know more,、uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram. That's where we will. Post some more of the preview. We'll, the first we'll, we'll hit you with teasers about <laughs> what the topic will might be for our first one. Yes, our、um, first one is coming up soon. Yeah, and hey, Natasha, welcome. Sorry that、oh, you hello, caught us、Natasha. right at the end, but you're right. It will be there for the rewatch in a few minutes. All right, so、mm-hmm. and help us out for the、uh, for the tea. All the turns and stuff. We、right. saw your comments for the last episode, and that was really helpful. Yeah,、Thank、so no worries. Just send your comments in later. They, they don't、mm-hmm. have to be live only.、Um, we love to hear from you guys, both the guys who were here live and all of you guys who are rewatching. Let、mm-hmm. us know what you think about the terms and what some good terms might be or translations.、Absolutely. And stay tuned on all our social media outlets for our upcoming,、uh, our next upcoming series. Sunday Tea Book will still be going, but this、Absolutely. is a little bit slower, a little bit more.、Um, Cerebral and should be really fun. So until next time, guys, keep, keep steeping. steeping.